Welcome to Daily Wisdom from the Flipping Podcast. These episodes feature short, to-the-point clips from our full-length interviews. We talk to the men and women behind the trades, crypto exchanges, and regulations with the goal of helping you become a better, more informed investor. Hi, I'm Michael Kaplan, editor of the Flipping Podcast. Today's episode is taken from a 2018 conversation with Kevin Zhu, co-founder and head trader at Galois Capital, a high-volume U.S.-based OTC desk. We discuss why an investor might place an OTC or over-the-counter trade, how desks make money, and how they manage risk. For the full conversation, check out Flipping episode 30. This episode has two sponsors. The first sponsor is Nexo, which offers instant crypto credit lines. Check them out at nexo.io. Our second sponsor is the Nomix Cryptocurrency Market Cap and Data API for institutions, fintech apps, and funds. Without further ado, here's our conversation with Kevin Zhu, co-founder and head trader at Galois Capital. Enjoy. Can you tell us a little bit about what an OTC desk is in sort of maybe the most primitive terms possible and what problems they solve you know, regardless of whether or not they're crypto OTC desks or other kinds of OTC desks? OTC stands for over-the-counter. What it basically is, is that, you know, sometimes, you know, some kind of investor or trader, they need to move a really large size, a really big block trade in a particular asset or in their position. So, you know, normally when you would, you know, do that on the screens or, you know, in the lit venues or, you know, basically in the order books, you're going to subject yourself to a lot of slippage. To explain that a little bit, slippage is this idea that if you buy $1 of Bitcoin, you're probably just going to hit the best offer, right? The lowest offer. If you buy, you know, $100 million worth of Bitcoin, the best offer is not enough. You have to go down the order book. You have to start lifting more and more offers at less and less favorable prices. So ultimately, when you get that order executed, your blended average price on that execution is much worse than, you know, if you were to just trade $1, right? If you were just buying $1 worth of Bitcoin. So the idea of slippage is that the larger the size that you're doing, the worse the average blended price you're going to get is on that block. You know, since, you know, people trading these large blocks face this problem, OTC desks are there to service this, this issue and hopefully reduce costs, right? To reduce slippage for uh, this trader or investor. The idea is that when you trade uh, with an OTC desk, the desk functions in some ways like a dealer. What I mean by that is a customer would come up to us and uh, they would say, hey, I want to buy 1,000 Bitcoin. Uh, what's the price? Right? Or they would say, let me see quotes for 1,000 Bitcoin. Let me see two-way quotes. So that means they want to see both bid and an offer for 1,000 Bitcoin. So then we would offer them some price. Right? Let's say the price is at 100 bucks, and we say uh, 99 bid a 101 offer. You know, effectively, they're able to get their entire block done at that price. And as long as that price is better than the blended average price they would get slipping through the order books, then the OTC desk would have saved them money. There's a question here, why would the OTC desk do this, right? The OTC desk, they're, they're selling to them at 101, buying from them at 99, but then, you know, they have all this inventory now, right? They're either too long or too short in their own inventory. Part of the job of the OTC desk for their own balance sheet is to figure out how to get rid of that inventory, whether it's long or short. And to the extent that, you know, the counterparty to the desk has, you know, the desk itself, let's put it this way. Let's say um, that the desk itself has better execution than the counterparty uh, it trades with. Then there's some sort of net value, which is shared between both, right? The counterparty gets better slippage, gets a more favorable price, and the OTC desk takes some margin. So it's sort of a win-win situation, and it's effectively execution arbitrage, right? One group executes better than another, and there's some savings in between, and then some is split with the first person, some is split with the second person. So that's sort of you know the, the idea behind OTC desk. OTC desk specialize in managing inventory and getting execution done. We can get into either side of those. I think the the first is, you know, if you think about it, there's a lot of different ways of managing inventory. You don't actually have to go to the markets themselves, right? The direct markets, right? The lit venues or the exchanges. Hey, this is Clay cutting in here from the editor's booth to explain what lit venues are. Lit venues are the opposite of dark pools or dark liquidity, whereas dark trading venues do not display prices at which participants are willing to trade. Lit pools do show these various bids and offers in different assets. 
Exchanges operate in such a way that available liquidity is displayed at all times and form the bulk of the lit pools available to traders. You know, first, you, what you could do is you could use multiple exchanges, right? You have access to all the different exchanges in the world. You have some smart routing on your systems. And uh, anytime you need to hedge off risk, then you sort of pro rata distribute the order out multiple exchanges. And then maybe you have some kind of scheduling, right? So maybe you just don't get rid of it all at once. Rather, you slowly massage it into the market. You slowly like you, you want to minimize market impact as much as possible. Do carry some risk, some inventory risk during that time. But maybe your your market impact, your slippage is going to be better because you do a little bit slowly and, and less aggressively into the market over time. So those are just some things that you can do just on the exchanges and lit venues to you know hedge off your exposure. But there's a you know a couple other ways to manage inventory. One way is that you know there's a whole bunch of other OTC desks, and sometimes you can share risk with them. So let's say you know Counterparty buys a thousand Bitcoin from you, right? Maybe you can say, well, I'm going to buy 500 Bitcoin from another OTC desk, right? You know, the counterparty pays you. You pay the other OTC desk. You have a little bit less risk on your books, you know, and overall, you know, if you had another, if there was another OTC desk, you could also, you know, ship the other 500 to them, or you could just work the, the other 500 yourself on, on the markets. So, you know, definitely sharing flow with other OTC desks is a way to get rid of it. And then the last way to do it is to warehouse the risk and wait for matching counterflow. So counterflow is the most is the most valuable, I think, to an OTC desk. And what that is is like, you know, let's say Alice comes in and buys 100 Bitcoin right now from us, and then Bob comes in half an hour later and he sells us 100 Bitcoin. Well, then we've just naturally balanced ourselves out, right? We we carried some inventory risks for half an hour, but in doing so, we avoided the need to have any hedging costs whatsoever. We make some profit on the spread with Alice and we make some profit on the spread with Bob rather than making profit, you know, trading with Alice and then losing that uh, or at least part of that in the hedging process and getting rid of exposure. So those are the three main ways, I would say, of managing inventory. And there's a lot of sort of uh, nuance that goes into each one. That's it for today. If you like what you heard and want to support the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you decide to leave us a review after subscribing, we'll send you a free Nomics t-shirt. Just hit us up on Twitter at username Nomics Finance after you've left the review and we'll hook you up. You may also be interested in Nomics.com, our crypto market cap and pricing website. Check us out at Nomics.com, spelled N-O-M-I-C-S. Now stick around for our legal disclaimer. All opinions expressed by podcast hosts or guests are solely their own opinion and do not reflect the opinion of Nomics or any other company. This podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon as the basis for investment decisions. The producers, hosts, and guests of the show may maintain positions in the companies or assets discussed today. 